Well, I can't wait for Phelan's review of this. <laughs> I guarantee he will be pissed. What if he's just like, it was all right. <laughs> I would be shocked. I would be shocked because before, when I, I only saw the trailer for this once actually yeah. before, which is surprising, but mm. I saw the trailer and I'm like, this looks better than the first movie. Boy, was that a bad call. <laughs> I, I do know that Phelan has seen it because he tweeted me. Oh, he when, saw it tonight? When I put up the picture of our, when we first got there, the theater was empty. Um, he tweeted, he responded and said, there was only one other guy in our screen. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out we all had bad nights, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how not an hour and 40 minutes that felt. That felt like it was two and a half hours long. Yeah, like it kept going and going and going. And I'm like, I know it's not near the end because they haven't gotten to the Technodrome yet. Uh -huh. I know there's still going to be 10,000 hours mm. left of this. <laughs> So, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows is a colossal piece of shit that you could pay top dollar theater prices to see, but don't, because this is a bag of fucking dicks. <laughs> I just, everything that I thought I would like, I uh -huh. didn't. Like they, they they brought in um, Casey Jones, oh, and I'm like, I love Jesus Casey Jones, and like it's just he wears the mask once, and then he's just some dude. This he could be any guy. He could be any guy, and could also not even be in this fucking movie. He could not be. In you this know movie. who he is in this? He's Chris O'Donnell's Robin character. He is exactly. He That's is, exactly that. Is exactly what he is. He is just some whiny, smart ass, unlikable douchebag character. I didn't realize it was supposed to be Casey Jones because I didn't remember seeing him in the trailer until she I called did. him, like, Officer Jones or Mr. Uh -huh. Jones or whatever, and I'm like, wait, that's... Yeah, he's a cop in that's this. That's Casey Jones? Who, for some reason, still, like... In any situation where it could be like, you know, maybe you sh you're a cop, maybe you should shoot at him or something. Fuck it, you know what? Rollerblades, hockey stick, shoot pucks at him. Whatever. He's a cop, but he can't figure out how to break into police headquarters except except as under undercover. Mm -hmm. Is it because he was un suspended he at the sus time? He, was he suspended? might have been. Okay, I guess that makes sense. You know who else could have been cut out of the movie and it wouldn't have made any difference? Will Arnett. Uh, Will Arnett, yeah. <laughs> Most people, honestly. Yeah. Um, Krang? Yeah. The Shredder? Yeah. You know, how is, how are Bebop and Rocksteady mm. more of a presence in this movie than either of the two main villains? They're in it so fucking much. Mm -hmm. And then like Krang, blink and you miss his intro. Mm -hmm. Like it seemed like it was going a million miles an hour where he's just like, hey, I've got this plan and then you got to do mm -hmm. this, little para, oh, this portal thing. And anyway, we're going to team up and take over the world. Bye. I'm like, what? Because that all was this your movie... intro? All this, this movie is the equivalent of just playing with your fucking toys. It is just action scene, exposition, action scene, exposition, 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 action scene, action scene, and then nap time. That's <laughs> this fucking movie. There is no, no one has a single conversation in this film. Yeah. No one has anything to do with anything unless it is just explaining this stupid plot to you that I've already seen in Secret of the Ooze <laughs> <laughs> and with just an onslaught of over abused CGI in this film where sometimes it'll just straight up look like you're watching an animated film until an until a live action character pops up in it they CGI a piece of pizza on the bottom of a guy's <laughs> shoe because yeah, why? putting why? pizza on the bottom of someone's shoe <laughs> is hard work for these filmmakers <laughs> Well, I, I ask myself why in so much of this, because it is so much just, just exposition, just trying to sell toys, just every shallow, horrible thing that this movie could possibly be, that no one has an intro. They're just there. Oh, Krang they had the, they is had the just text. there. They had the text to explain who the turtles were as if we hadn't seen the first movie. Mm -hmm. like, it's Mikey, like everybody knows he this. likes pizza. Mm -hmm. the, biggest, the biggest what that I had in this mm -hmm. movie was... 
Okay, they have, um, they turn Bebop and Rocksteady into the Rhino and the Warthog because mm -hmm. they're people and then they turn them into that. Yeah. And then Baxter Stockman. <laughs> um, <laughs> he explains that apparently they became these things mm -hmm. because they they were everyone has a hidden gene mm -hmm. for their evolutionary ancestors the spirit animal that's not how evolution works. We didn't evolve from pigs, from fucking rhinos, and even if we did, which is horrible science and not mm. any way accurate, we didn't all evolve from different animals. We don't have a different animal ancestor. <laughs> it makes more sense in the turtles where it's just like, oh yeah, the last thing you were touching is what you turn into. Sure, uh -huh. I'll buy it, but what evolutionary ancestors? Mm -hmm. That makes no sense. And Leonardo is a dick for not telling them about this that could turn them human. Like, yeah. dude, you well, know that's what? that's a plot that could have been cut out, too. I, I'm glad that, that, okay, that plot was only, like, three minutes of this movie. But it is but the they, only there was a lot time. a setup for it, though. Yeah, it's the only time, only time, where they're trying to do something character-related with these turtles. That's true. Like, it's dumb, because... Leonardo is basically taking away the choice for them to possibly become human and not live in the fucking sewer anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. Especially when apparently they could be the same on the inside, so they would uh -huh. have all their invulnerabilities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And th this is the kind of movie, though, where... At so many points, Leonardo's like, no, we're secret, we move in the shadows, we're ninjas. Okay, that's fine. But how about that big old fucking flamethrowing car you have that has <laughs> giant mechanical nunchucks flying out of it, <laughs> spitting fucking sewer lids? On it, it sh the opening scene is them in their rocket skateboards flying across swimming pools on the tops of buildings. Like, take your fucking uh, shadows and shove it up your ass. <laughs> fucking asshole. Like, every writer, producer... Everyone involved in this movie could eat the biggest bag of moldy dicks. <laughs> God damn, this movie pissed me off. They set this up that they're going to fight and that, the, you know, he was being a dick. And, like, mm -hmm. that's fine. But, like, they have their big... The mountain chase from the first movie is a river chase in, yeah. this, in, the, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And... They, um, this is, this involves like a whole, like they, they mm -hmm. jump out of an airplane to get onto another plane and then the plane crashes and then they're in the river and then mm -hmm. they're down a waterfall. By the way, no one's ever hurt at any point. They kind of brush it off. It never mm -hmm. feels like they're in any danger at any point. But, um, so after all that shit happens. That's when they're like, we're not a team. We're brothers, but we're not a team. And this mm -hmm. is like, oh, we didn't work together except... Yeah, they worked together. Mm -hmm. They they were fucking catching each other on the hoverboards, and like, and even he, he, Raphael's like, "Oh, nice catch!" You know, like the only reason he was late is because he was scared. That had nothing what? to do with not working as a team member. Yeah, like he, he's, and even then, I'm like, "You were fine with jumping off the Empire State Building, like onto this rocket thing, go across pools, like yeah. across buildings, across the street, but jumping from one plane to another, too much, bro." Yeah, I just, <laughs> and there were so many things where people are just flying around catching each other like Bebop and Rocksteady are doing that oh like... because no one can die in this film like if you're <laughs> yeah, thrown from the, a plane all the people on the plane have parachutes on yeah. including the pilots in the uh -huh. seats just happen to be wearing them in yeah. case that happens mm -hmm. just in case we are torn apart by this Gatlin gun inside <laughs> of the thing the fucking Bebop and Rocksteady are taken out by a grenade that and is a, still fine. Yeah, that's apparently <laughs> a dud, and maybe just shoots dust out of it. <laughs> oh, man, that was rough. I got so sick and tired of those two because they're just fucking laughing all the time, even at points where it doesn't make sense. Because mm -hmm. they're just normal dudes. They're stupid, but they're normal dudes. Mm -hmm. And they get shot up with the serum, or with the ooze or whatever, and they turn into these things. They don't know this is going to happen. They didn't yeah. volunteer for it. All of a sudden, they're turning into a rhino and a warthog. And they're the ones, Bebop is laughing during uh. it. Like, he's like, <laughs> what's going on? Like, do you have no fucking fear that you're turning into a fucking warthog? Mm -hmm. Apparently not, because they love everything. Yeah. 
And also, Shredder doesn't really give a shit about their antics. Like, at least in Turtles 2 with Toka and Rizar, <laughs> Shredder was often annoyed by their antics, and it wasn't... He didn't mean for them to turn out to be so fucking dumb. They just did. In this one... They'll be standing in the background and say, you want to see the Big Bang? Yeah, the and fart jokes. Shredder um, just, I guess, doesn't mind this. I don't Shredder know. Shredder is such a non-entity, such a non-presence. Mm -hmm. Like, he could just be any background person. I don't see any acting, any character. Uh -huh. I'm sure the actor's probably fine in other things, but he's not doing anything here. I, I got nothing on this guy. Um, Tyler Perry was trying. He like, was trying. Yeah. He, had, like, the, he had the laugh. He had sort of character mannerisms going yeah. on. Again, no payoff for that. But like Shredder, he's literally fridged. Mm -hmm. He's frozen and fridged. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Krang straight up calls him an action figure. Like he straight up says, "Like I'm gonna freeze you and keep you in my action figure collection." Which I guess action figures are a thing that his planet has. Yeah. Why does he, why does he know about this Earth stuff? Um, man, I think you know what fat the, Krang they have to shove into his fucking body. What the fuck was that? The thing that pissed me off, I think, the most in this movie is. Uh, um, it's funny he was in this too because we were just mentioning him earlier. Dean Winters is in this movie. Yeah. As the bartender. I forgot that. I just and mentioned it. As soon as Dean. I fucking love Dean Winters. So when Dean Winters pops up as the bartender, I'm like, I hope he's in this more. He probably isn't because this movie would be dumb enough to waste Dean Winters. And they do. Whatever casting director looks at Dean Winters and fucking Arrow and says, Arrow should be Casey Jones, should be fucking fired. The biggest, you know what? I can believe that there are turtles who walk and talk and are ninjas more than I believe that Arrow could intimidate Dean Winters, which he <laughs> does in this. There's a scene where he's trying to get information out of Dean Winters by tearing up stuff in his bar, and it is more unbelievable than Tyler Perry as Alex Cross fighting a kickboxer Matthew Fox. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, f this movie could fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, when they immediately start with Megan Fox dressing up as a Catholic schoolgirl. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck this. I didn't have a problem with her in the first one. I know they did some hypersexualized bullshit mm -hmm. where it's like the ass joke and stuff like that, but I I didn't really have a problem with her. I didn't hate the first movie. It wasn't good, the but I didn't hate it. The first one's not a good movie. It just was what it was. It's way better than this. It's way better than this. <laughs> and in this one, she was terrible. Mm -hmm. I was so sick of her, like... Having like this like pouty sexy look all the time, the constant Valley Girl speak. It, I don't believe her as a reporter. No. That was the blandest ass reporting I've ever heard. It's like it sounded like she was not there at all. Megan Fox did not want to be in this movie. There are there are times in this movie where she is just suddenly there. There's a part where you know she's doing her thing with Baxter Stockman, and then. Uh, it cuts to the turtles doing some things, cuts to the turtles back in the sewer looking at security footage, pans out to a wider shot, and she's just suddenly there with them. <laughs> like, oh, I guess April's here now. <laughs> right on. I mean, God forbid any kind of connection between the scenes. It is just, just exposition dialogue. And the special effects are so cartoony and fake that there's a part where... There's security footage altered to take out Bebop and Rocksteady to make it look like April O'Neil is just sneaking into this lab to steal something. And Officer Laura Linney, whose appearance in this movie makes as much sense as when Frances McDormand was in Transformers 3. <laughs> um, April O'Neil and Casey Jones are trying to say, like, no, the footage has been altered. Like, that's, that's not what happened. And then later on, when she sees the footage, in which there is CGI fucking Bebop and Rocksteady running through it, oh, clearly, that's the real footage. Ah, you're right. I love that it was solved within two seconds, this mm -hmm. whole, like, police interrogation plot, and mm -hmm. then moving on. Like, it, nothing felt of consequence.
And it didn't feel like anyone was a presence in the movie. Not the turtles, not the human characters, no one. Mm -hmm. Except <laughs> Bebop and Rocksteady. It felt like they were the ones that were constantly there for me. And mm -hmm. everyone else was like... Barely anything. I thought Tyler Perry was trying to bring some life to it. He like was, it, the best scene was probably when um, Megan Fox is hitting on him, uh -huh. and he's like, he's just really flattered by it. Like, oh, you wouldn't yeah. know who I am. Oh, you know about science. He actually seemed like he wanted to be there. He seemed like, like he was having fun. Nothing else seemed fun. No, no, not the voice acting. Not. Uh, <laughs> Definitely not Megan Fox. Megan no. Fox did not want to be in this. No. <laughs> like, not at all. Casey Jones was just awful. It's just some GQ fucking throwaway character in this movie to let's put him on some fucking magazine covers and shit and just call him Casey Jones. Yeah, well, and he doesn't wear the mask except once in the movie. Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't wear it at all, so it's just... Some guy in a jacket that's fighting, I guess. Mm. And you know they're going to get together because they're the two handsomest people. Yeah. You know, but it, it yeah. just felt like forced at the end. It's like, hey, what are you doing later? We should go play some hockey. Like, what? Like, Did really? They... This, this guy over Will Arnett? Come on. <laughs> Will Arnett has it's at least got a personality. Like, I, I've, I've not seen Arrow. I don't know how good this guy is on Arrow. He sucks in this. It's wildly fucking miscast. It's insane how miscast this guy is as Casey Jones. Well, the character is not set up like Casey Jones in the slightest, mm -hmm. so maybe he's cast alright for a police officer who wants to help. Mm -hmm. I guess, but it's not It's not set up to be the Casey Jones character. When the guy in the anyone porn else. parody <laughs> looks way more like Casey Jones yes. than this. I don't, I don't believe this <laughs> this arrow guy as like lawbreaker. Like yeah. that was there. Uh huh. Yeah. Fuck that. Like when I look at like Elias Coteus as Casey Jones, yeah. well, I see a guy who lives on the streets and fucking bashes people with hockey sticks. It would be hard <laughs> to top that performance. It'd he's be he's pretty much the hard. quintessential yeah. Casey Jones. Yeah, but you can attempt it. You, you can know? try. You can try not to be so blatantly shallow with that's your what, casting. That's what the movie was like. It just felt like at times we were watching a parody of what someone in the past would be like, wouldn't this be a dumb reinterpretation of the Ninja Turtles? Mm -hmm. And they would do a parody where everyone's really bland and mm -hmm. it's all about looks and um, superficiality and they're like, haha, wouldn't that be funny? But they'd never really make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they made it. <laughs> <laughs> and the soundtrack is really weird in this. I like um, some of the songs. No, honestly. yeah, the songs... Some of the songs were good, but it was more like, is this just what was on your iPod when you wrote this script? <laughs> because in the chase scene where they're at the beginning of it on the highway with the nunchuck van, because, you know, stealth, um, <laughs> it's playing Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress by the Hollies. There's a part, which, a great song, but... Huh? And... Later on, when they're tr they're recruiting Will Arnett to get into the police station, and it's playing Spirit in the Sky, and yeah. it, when they go to Brazil, it's playing War, What Is It Good For? Yeah. And Vanilla Ice is on the soundtrack. Yeah, that's, an, that's a Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze reference there. <laughs> ice, and not even... They needed yeah. some Vanilla Ice in this movie, is what I'm saying. I'm just surprised they didn't go with Ninja Rap. Instead, they played Ice Ice Baby. Like, would that have been too on the nose movie? <laughs> really? Like, come on. Oh, oh yeah, and I, I really buy that uh, this fucking dive bar being run by grizzled Dean Winters has got fucking Ice Ice Baby just jamming on his jukebox. <laughs> I, I knew, I suspected we were in for a bad time when the first time we see the turtles and they're doing their whole mm. jumping off the building thing, they go, turtle formation! And then Michelangelo's like, I thought you said squirrel formation! Uh -huh. Why would I say squirrel formation? Apparently that's a joke. That's mm. what qualifies as a joke in this universe. Mm -hmm. Sorry guys, we're nuts! 
<laughs> That's because Will Arnett's in this movie. That's why they thought Squirrel. <laughs> Sur surly Squirrel. The whole time I was just thinking, like, the first one, I liked how they used Will Arnett because, mm -hmm. A, it's Will Arnett. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love B, Will Arnett. B, he's the character of Vernon Fenwick. Yeah. But they're trying to present him as an action hero, yeah. which is ridiculous, mm -hmm. but they don't use him very much in this. So I'm like, I would rather watch him be in an action hero mm -hmm. because it's ridiculous. He would have been better casting as Casey Jones than this guy Honestly, is. Honestly, yes. Than, than Arrow. Like, they and then they're, they're mad at Vern because, like, he's... They set up this plan where he, Will Arnett takes credit for everything that happened in the first movie, and then they're mad at him... That he take, takes credit? That he's doing what... Like, yeah, he's being cocky about it, but that's what you wanted him to, to do. Like, you wanted him to take credit, like, and you're, like, shooting spitballs at him, like, at the basketball game. Because... <laughs> Man, why isn't he mentioning us? He's not supposed to, you fucking idiot! <laughs> <laughs> they had, um... The part where they sent, uh... Vernon and um, and April to go shut down the portal parallel mm -hmm. dimension device or whatever. And they're like, wait, what are we supposed to do? Like, we don't know how many people are guarding it or what's going on. And it's like, oh, well, do you want to switch and take on these two? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go do that. Turns out they had nothing to worry about because they had one person guarding it. Mm. One person. They had all the Foot Clan. One person mm -hmm. guarding it. I don't. I think she's Shredder's daughter. I forget her name, but she's barely a character like mm -hmm. anyone. And she's guarding it, and they take her out really easy. Yeah. And then, of course, Casey Jones has to go in and do it because why the fuck would the characters from the first movie be doing anything? And he has to do it by strapping wheels to the bottom of his shoes. It's like rollerblades. <laughs> so that'd be easier. <laughs> yeah. And using uh, the a hockey, his hockey stick to shoot a puck, to, or to, to slam it and hit the button that closes the door, which I guess is easier than just pushing it. Why does he have so many hockey pucks? How? Because Casey. Because that's where, something where Casey Jones him? does. Where, I don't... where is he keeping them? In, in the trunk of his car. But did he just like hold them all in his hands while he's shooting? <laughs> and the, okay, like the police. After uh, Shredder gets out, and there was that whole ca uh, car chase with mm. all the Foot Clan, and then with the nunchuck vehicle, and the turtles, and the shooting the manhole covers, and all this stuff, um, they're like, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. And uh, Casey Jones is like, hey, here's what happened. There was these turtles, and they were shooting the stuff out of the van, and there was all these ninjas. And then the lady's like, uh, yeah, this is just sounds stupid. You're crazy. Whatever. It's like, okay, you uh -huh. guys are in New York fucking city. Uh -huh. No one saw this. Well, you're driving around. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend no one saw this. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. But if no one saw this, surely there would be debris. The nunchuck arms were left mm -hmm. behind because they yeah. broke off at one point. So you got some evidence. And as a policewoman, mm -hmm. perhaps you could look at this evidence and mm -hmm. piece together that maybe there's some credence to this story. Not to mention the fact that after she has seen the turtles and knows they exist... Oh, Bebop and Rocksteady, like, a uh, warthog guy and, like, other dude. Well, that's too much. I don't believe that. That's just silly. Fuck off, movie. <laughs> this movie could fuck it. It is right up there within, like, uh, them trying, like, the in Transformers 2, where it was, like, the events of Transformers 1 were, like, a conspiracy theory. Because <laughs> apparently no one saw that shit in the first one. <laughs> Ugh. I will say this, like, uh, <laughs> in, in a movie like, usually a movie like this, like, yeah, like, eventually the heroes will, like, save the day and whatnot, just, like, half the city has to get destroyed first. In this, they actually do save the city, like, before, like, any, like, it, there's, like, this uh, the side of a couple buildings where some, like, pieces kind of come down, but, like, every building in New York is, like, left standing by the end of this movie, which is very rare in a film like this. Well, and especially <laughs> when it involves giant technodrome, people mm. from other dimensions, portals and shit like that. Like, the stuff from the first movie, 
was a lot smaller scale than that. So I could believe at least that they could try and cover this up or mm. whatever. Like, I don't know about shit with like the Technodrome mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. Like, maybe the cat's out of the bag now. Well, that's I don't why know how the city's gonna cover this one up. It's like it ends like the same way that like Short Circuit Two did, with like uh, them recognizing the turtles as like citizens and whatnot, yeah. and having this big <laughs> thing. Um, <laughs> so and hmm, I, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> like the the ending credits were better than anything in the movie. Yeah, the three D was better too. Yeah, they had like bright cartoon colors. Mm. It was fun. They had uh, they were playing the eighty seven turtles theme. Yeah. That was more fun that was going on there because I I don't mind if you want to do like a darker interpretation, but it's sort of like the, it was neither. Mm -hmm. It was neither fun nor a dark interpretation. This this movie was just stuff happening. That's it. It's it's it, it just is what it is. It just it feels like a movie. It, the movie never stops for one, whether it's exposition or it's an action scene. That's why it feels so long because mm. I can't tell if we're in the middle of the movie. I can't tell if this is nearing the climax because it's all the same. It is just action set piece after action set piece, and then just some clunky exposition and wash, rinse, repeat. It's so tedious and it's so exhausting. It never takes a fucking minute to just fucking chill for like five minutes jesus christ movie and well, like it starts off getting right into the action and just never stops and like if you want to have uh, action that has any sort of suspense or any sort of like life to it you have to take mm -hmm. a break you have to take a moment you have to like care about the people involved with it yeah and give the audience a breather you mm -hmm. know but they they never really do that i remember i also had that complaint about the first one like i remember saying that afterwards in the car but this movie just pissed me off way more than the first one did no the first one like i didn't hate it but it wasn't good but I, this one i genuinely dislike it it's bad this is really bad the first one i from what i remember about it i i just remember kind of being like yeah i didn't really like that very much but you know at least it wasn't transformers 3 <laughs> uh this movie is i hated this movie i hated this fucking movie <laughs> this movie is what i thought the first one would be uh, you know like all the shit with like fan servicey megan fox bunch of fart jokes the unlikable turtles just selling mm -hmm. toys they didn't even have like the first one had like the elevator scene where the turtles are just like um, beatboxing oh, or singing yeah, songs together or whatever. Right. That was the most turtles feeling scene there. Mm -hmm. um, none of that was in this movie. There was no <laughs> moment where I uh -huh. felt like, ah, oh, these are the turtles. Yeah. This feels like a bunch of mutant Shreks walking around. <laughs> like walking snot straight out of fucking Booger Man. Christ. Yeah, this movie is so dumb and so full of such juvenile shit that I can't, I can't even... believe it's not two and a half hours long. It felt two and a half oh, hours. Oh, it absolutely does. And the um, all the shit with Krang. I mean, the, it, basically, the plot boils down to Krang teams up with Shredder and wants to take over the world. That is the main thing. Mm -hmm. Krang is not a presence in this movie, so why do you care about the ending? You don't know anything about him unless you were familiar with the 87 cartoon. You're yeah. not going to follow it. I don't know if kids are going to get what's going on. It's just constantly moving, and like it, if you blink, you will miss it. That one scene that's explaining, like, I'm from another dimension, and I want to take over this dimension and bring my Technodrome in. What the fuck's a Technodrome? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You still don't know from the movie. Yeah. They're like, I will bring in my Technodrome. Mm -hmm. What's a Technodrome? I don't know, big alien thing, mm -hmm. basically made out of Transformers parts, bunch of metal things that you don't yeah. know what the shit is, and just like, poof, comes together. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what it is, I don't know. <laughs> that scene is so out of nowhere. There's no build-up to it, it is just suddenly there's Krang, suddenly Krang is in the movie, and it's so fake-looking and jarring-looking that it's right up there with that, like, deleted scene from Star Wars where Han Solo meets Jabba the Hutt. Yeah! <laughs> like... The humor is about his fucking juvenile. It's actually actually more so, but like in in that Star Wars scene where he that awful effect where he steps on Jabba's tail and they just digitally put Han Solo over it. This just looks like 
it, it, yeah, it's just one of those scenes where it just looks like what it is. It's a cartoon. It's a total... It looks like, like you know what, either make an animated movie or make a fucking live-action movie. Just, they, had, just... they had an actor with no charisma bouncing off of a CGI character mm -hmm. that is not built up and has no personality. Mm -hmm. It's like, how fucking quick was Shredder like, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll help you take over this dimension mm -hmm. and I'll rule with you, I guess. I don't know. I don't even remember what he wanted in the first movie, like, but I don't know. I, I barely remember. I, I can't remember much about the first movie, At least honestly. in the first movie he had the turtle soup line, but he had nothing in this. Mm -hmm. And Sh like Kred Krang shows up in that one scene where he's introduced, mm -hmm. and then he shows up at the very end. There's nothing in between. There's no yeah. him like, haha, my plan is coming together or anything like that mm -hmm. to kind of build it up to to make him a presence or a threat or mm -hmm. anything. It's nothing. So you really don't think Phelan will like this? <laughs> oh my God, he will hate <laughs> this movie. I'm I'm still waiting for like. <sighs> passable. <laughs> like, to me, that would just make me laugh even more. Like, more so than if he, like, liked it. Just if he was just sort of like, <sighs> two stars. <laughs> Phelan, if you're watching, I'd like to apologize for thinking that there would be something redeemable in this. <laughs> and I went, hey, the trailer looked better than the first movie. I'm looking forward to this. I'm uh -huh. sorry. You were right. I was wrong. <laughs> what if he does that? What if he's like... He what will, if, I can what guarantee if, you, he will detest this movie. But what if in his video that he's probably shooting right now, he's doing the same thing, looking at the camera <laughs> and saying, I just want to apologize to Allison. I really should have given this a chance. It It is better than the first one. No, because I know this is going to hit so many sore notes for him. Because not only is it shitting all over the turtles, it's shitting all over the 80s cartoon turtles. Yeah. Everything's wrong. The fact that they... The fact that they did it, 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 it reminds me of the skit they had on Family Guy that was like the Muppets with the wrong voices, <laughs> where they would be like, hey, it's me, Fozzie Bear, mm -hmm. waka waka. Waka it was, waka waka. It was like that. Everyone sounded wrong. It's like mm -hmm. these sort of look like the 80s Turtles characters, but they mm -hmm. sound wrong. Mm -hmm. And they, for some reason, whatever reason, they give Rocksteady this, was it an Irish accent? Or they said I mean, he was finished, but I don't know if that was supposed to be a joke. He had an accent. I'm not an expert on the show. Like I, I, I yeah. In I, the show, I, he did not have an accent. I, like I couldn't that. remember. Like I was like I. <laughs> Th they had like Brooklyn accents. There were some parts about the movie, and even the first one too, where I had to be like, I don't know if this was exact because yeah, when I was a kid, I I watched the cartoon, not like regularly or anything. I wasn't like obsessed with it, but, but I watched it. Like I mean, I didn't mind the um the the bebop voice, the deep mm -hmm. black guy voice. Like he had a great voice. He was annoying as fuck cuz he just kept laughing at everything even mm -hmm. when it wasn't a joke. Yeah. But like he I was fine with that. It mm -hmm. it didn't sound like the cartoon, but th that's fine. You don't have to sound like the cartoon, yeah. but you still have to sound like it fits the character. Uh -huh. The the fucking accent with uh Rocksteady. I just don't understand at all it didn't fit in the slightest it was reminding Crane me sounded more of, awful like uh, splinter sounded awful with tony fucking shalhoub <laughs> oh god like i the, the fucking bebop and rock studying this were reminding me more so of skids and mud flap not that yeah. they, not that they're like racist by any means but like uh just the same kind of like stupid goofy background shit that they're doing whether it's like farting or whether it's the just awful shit skids and mud flap did in that it just kind of reminded me of that they're here to make the kids laugh and the kids will probably want to buy toys of it afterwards i hope not i mean it's like it's just Farts and asses mm -hmm. and fat jiggling and the whole just <laughs> pandering. Yeah, the fucking... Oh, I liked it when the movie CGI'd a barrel full of spaghetti. <laughs> And then they had the the look between, mm -hmm. like, they're doing that, and they have the long spaghetti slurp, and then mm -hmm. they cut to, uh, what's her face, the, the uh, Shredder's daughter, and mm -hmm. I think just a foot clamp person, I don't remember who she was looking at, but they exchange a look, mm -hmm. like a, what? 
but it's like she's such a non-character. I don't remember if she even had any lines. I think she probably did, but I don't remember a single I thing. I forgot that she, did. she existed until you mentioned her. Earlier. Yeah, I mean, it's just nothing. Like yeah. the, it, it, it. Never have I seen a wacky look joke not hit that mm. hard. I guess. It was a lot of spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> what? I want to know. Okay, background here. Uh-huh. Like, who in the Foot Clan was making all of that spaghetti for mm-hmm. them? Like, did they have a giant pot that they boiled yeah. the, the spaghetti in there? Like, mm-hmm. was there someone who was official spaghetti ninja that had to do this? Yeah. Did they have to go out and buy a bunch of sauce? Like, they went to a Walmart, and they're like, yeah. shelves of ragu. Mm-hmm. They're like, hang on, what are we going to feed these to? Not normal food, a giant barrel of spaghetti. Oh, and I like that. Um, the idea of a giant barrel full of spaghetti, the filmmakers were like, "That's you can't have a barrel full of spaghetti. That That is impossible to do that. <laughs> we need a team of computer animators. <laughs> To make this impossible feat happen. <laughs> Put a false bottom in it. Make just the top of spaghetti. <laughs> I solved it for I didn't need however millions of dollars went into this. Goodness gracious. Mm. There was so... Okay. <laughs> there was so much use of the phrase, oh boy, in this. Oh I kept boy. Think, I kept thinking like... Sam Beckett has jumped in Mm -hmm. and is taking over. He's got to stop this horrible movie from happening. But some things are fixed points, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. (laughs) There's also a lot of, that went well. (laughs) (sighs) I wish this was funny, bad, but it really wasn't. The Lord, no. The best part was Tyler Perry, and that's a really sad thing to say. I, you know, I mean, he can... After Gone Girl, it's like Tyler Perry <laughs> can legitimately be the best part of the like Gone Girl's a great fucking movie anyway. He, he but can like, act. I saw acting there. I could see character mannerisms. Mm. Like he knows how to do a character, and it wasn't really over the top. I, you said it looked like it was going to be over the top. I didn't find that he was over the top in it. I like I yeah, he had like it a was goofy hammy. laugh. Like it was like he he was hamming it up a bit, but like it it see it at least seemed a hamming up in a way that felt. One, like, he, he he did legitimately want to be there. He was trying to make this entertaining. He mm-hmm. was trying to make this character somewhat memorable or kind of fun. Like, it didn't seem like, uh, like okay, like last week when Sarah and I were at Alice Through the Looking Glass. <laughs> There's a lot of ham in that movie. There is, with uh, Anne Hathaway doing her flower child thing. But that didn't see. That was like, yeah, this is she's in this for contract reasons. Like Tyler Perry in this is more like Sasha Baron Cohen and Alice Through the Looking Glass, where like they actually are trying. And well, you can be hammy and still have like there's fun hammy, and then there's like nobody's having fun hammy, mm-hmm. and like. I felt it was still grounded, mm-hmm. you know, like it was fun. He had like the, the, the quirky laugh, yeah. um, but it felt like it wasn't obnoxious. Um, it, it fit within the universe. I, f- he was the only one that I felt was that character. Yeah. He felt like Baxter Stockman in any uh-huh. incarnation that I've seen him. Um, and also there are way more way like he pro if it was like maybe just him and not, a bunch of this other wacky shit around him that's way more wacky than he is, it would probably come across more over probably. the top than it is because he seems... I mean, he is he is doing some ham in this movie. He absolutely is. But, like, when you've got Bebop and Rocksteady in the background farting up a storm <laughs> and doing their shit, like... Yeah, he'll look relatively grounded by comparison. <laughs> I did. I was kind of laughing hearing Tyler Perry going like, "Ah, oh, it's those turtles. Get the turtles. Mm-hmm. Ah, the uh, the dimensional portal is stabilized." Or like that was like an oh by the way. I didn't even remember there was a setup with a portal uh-huh. until like I didn't even realize that until psh, Shredder's taken up in a portal. Yeah. I'm like, wait, was that part of it? Uh huh. Was that wh- by the way he created a portal like a tele teleportation thing that ended up taking him to yes. Freddy's dimension? You're like, oh, I don't know where it transported the Shredder. What? Makes, sense to, makes sense to me. What 
was Baxter Stockman's goal? Final. Just to be known? Was that his only goal? Did he have anything outside of just, I want to be famous? Finally, some good hard science fiction. <laughs> Based Lordy. in reality. Lordy. Um, and they're like, if this ooze will turn them into into mutants, maybe it'll turn us into humans. How? Let's How pour it on our work? hand and find out. Yeah, apparently it'll just turn back. Thank mm. God that happened. <laughs> Otherwise he'd just have a fucking mutant hand forever. Did he test that before? Or did he just like, oh, well that's luck, I guess. Man, if 10-inch Mutant Ninja Turtles is better than it was, he would have poured that on his dick. <laughs> no! Oh, they did have a now dick. I'm three inches! <laughs> they did have a dick joke in this. Bebop did and Rocksteady, they? when they turn into them, they check inside their pants and like, My man! Ah. Oh. Yeah, they checked out the, they checked out their dicks, uh -huh. you know, for the kids. So take your kids to see them, to see it if you hate them. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the kids in front enjoyed it because they were screaming their heads off. Like, not not nearly as annoying as the kids when I went to go see the first one. Like the, <laughs> these kids were like kind of right the the ones at this movie were like right there kind of in the front and like they were they were a distance away that for the most time yeah. I didn't hear them unless the movie was quiet. And the movie wasn't quiet very much. No, not at all. Uh, in the first one, the theater was actually the first one was a way. Uh, the first movie is better than this, but. <laughs> the the experience of seeing the first movie was worse than this because when I saw the first one surrounded by kids in this packed theater who would not shut the fuck up and then the pro there was something the 3D wasn't working they were accidentally showing the 2D version so I was like yeah okay whatever so but then like 45 minutes into it they stopped it and they said oh sorry we accidentally put in the wrong version we're just going to take it back to the beginning and I'm like, you don't. Oh my um, God. <laughs> so I went out and hung out in the arcade for like 45 minutes to wait for the movie to catch up to that point. And then went back and watched the rest of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2014. <laughs> it seems ages ago now. Yeah. It seems like back when we were young and naive, Ninja Turtles 2014. And now... There's Ninja Turtles 2016. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What'd you think of the 3D in this one? It's fine. Yeah. Like, I'm sure, like... I mean, we we didn't see it on one of the bigger screens in there. I'm sure if you were to probably see this, like, in, like, IMAX 3D, it probably looks pretty impressive. It wasn't bad. Uh, yeah. Um, th but that's not me saying, like, you should go see this just to see the 3D. <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the most part, I did not notice it mm -hmm. um it was it wasn't bad but it wasn't anything like pff, right in your face so i mean mm -hmm. like as far as the theater experience pff, mm -hmm. like I, I didn't have a shitty experience seeing the first one because i wasn't surrounded by kids or whatever yeah. like it wasn't a good movie mm -hmm. but i didn't have a bad time in the theater like uh -huh. seeing it on the big screen well with, with all the noise and the set pieces or it, whatever it was what it was but this was not a good time because it was just it was loud and it was obnoxious. There were times where I just felt like, just shut up. It's just mm. noise and motion. Go away, movie. Go away. <laughs> I could see you sinking in your seat. I was <laughs> in the climax. The climax. I'm sinking farther and farther in my seat, my head down like this. Uh, it could not end fast enough. Yeah. And, I just and wanted it wasn't fast. To leave so hard. I just wanted to get out of that fucking theater. Like, <laughs> what about the kid at the the kid in the front row, like when the Ghostbusters trailer showed? Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> One of the kids is like, I wanna see that! Mm -hmm. I don't wanna see that! <laughs> That's got a political agenda! <laughs> I'm not sexist, I'm a feminist! But I think this is fucking a bunch of vagina bullshit! <laughs> but John Funny Cunts! Am I right? Something tells me that's... He didn't say that, by so, the way. So the, if, if he did, I would be like, hmm... High something, five, kid. something tells me it's it, it, he's he overhearing that from his father. He's, he's watching too much stuff on the internet. Get that kid yeah. away from the internet. Get that kid away from the internet. I think oh I've seen gosh. that kid in my comment section. Oh my god, they were showing the second trailer, too. The mm. one that basically gives away the ending. Yeah. I hated that. I liked the first trailer, but mm. I didn't like the second one because of that. I'm like, you know, can I just see the movie? Yeah. Can you not tell me what happens in the movie? <laughs> I... <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I didn't like either trailer, but like, uh, yeah, the second trailer, um, you're right. I'm like, I know what all the acts in this movie are going to be now. I, I know yeah. every place this movie's going to go. <laughs> Maybe there'll be some surprises in there. I, don't I can't know. wait for the um, sing and dance off with the ghosts. <laughs> I heard that's a thing. I'm not. I'm not joking. I think there's going to be a dance off with the yeah, ghosts. Sing and dance off. Yeah. Uh, Why I'm not? stoked for that. If that happens, mm -hmm. stoked. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this has been a review of Ghostbusters. <laughs> You know the uh, movie that no one has talked about on the internet. Yeah, but you know I'm gonna call it now. Like regardless of how Ghostbusters is, if it's terrible or if it's yeah. good, it will be better than Turtles Two. I completely agree with that. I'm not even looking forward to Ghostbusters. Like I'm, I I, I haven't liked the trailers or anything like that. But it doesn't I, seem miserable. It seems yeah. like there's probably a lot of misses with the the jokes, uh -huh. but it doesn't seem miserable. It's going to be better than this movie. Yes. It is at least whether you like the characters in the new Ghostbusters or not, there will at least be characters in it. <laughs> um, there will at least be How is personalities movie? in it. How is a movie that's so overstuffed not present one actual character? Well, okay, like Baxter Stockman was the only one that felt like a character, mm -hmm. but still unfulfilled. Everyone is unfulfilled. Mm hmm. Um, maybe because it was over stuff. I don't know, but it just feels like after you throw so many people against the wall, something's gonna. Because stick. it's over stuffed, but not with. It, it's over stuffed with characters in the film. Like these it's, are things that but, you saw in the '80s cartoon, but. But it uses them as props, just for action sequences, yeah. just for action sequences, silly jokes, exposition. That's it. Not to make, not to have like any kind of conversation or anything like that. It is just like these characters are here to eat a bunch of spaghetti and fart and do stupid shit. These characters are here. They can have a fight like on the fucking river and the waterfalls. Uh, the only kind of like huh, I got out of this was when they fell from the waterfall and all went in they their shells. In the shells. Like, <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> out of the two lead villains. Uh, Krang and Shredder. Uh, I couldn't tell you what their dialogue was like. Like, I mean, I could tell you, like, that Krang made some, like, references that aliens wouldn't make. But, I mean, mm. like, there are specific things to Shredder or Krang. Um, Krang hasn't had that many adaptations, but anything that I've seen with them, mm. like, there are specific things to them mm. that I could say, that's Krang, that's Shredder. Yeah. And any of these lines could be placed with any character and it would be just the same because there's no personality there's no mm -hmm. quirks there's no barely any motivation mm -hmm. it just it barely feels there yeah because i mean if you want to recite their lines just like i don't know describe the plot because that's yeah. what their lines are yeah. their lines are just explaining what's happening on screen i was thinking that part way through the movie too like i was like has there been any scene that wasn't just like an exposition to something? Like, have they actually had any moments? Where nope. they're like, hey, this is a None. character thing? Where they're just... Even when they're trying to chill out, they're not uh -huh. really... <clears throat> and they have... Um, they do all these setups about, like, oh, they feel like they don't belong. And then they're gonna, like, hide out. And they're like, oh, we. I wish that we could be just, like, normal people. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes they just, like... Just... They just state it. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a, a, a scene where um, they're all getting ready to go out and they, they're they with April. And then she's like, I'm going to go check this out. And they're like, all right, let's go. And she's like, wait, the sun's almost up. And then they cut away and do an ADR line because they thought the audience was stupid. Mm -hmm. And then she goes like, you'll be seen. You can't go out there. Yeah, you're right. We should go out at night with our fucking giant nunchuck robot van so we can live <laughs> in the shadows. But like, I'm like, fucking... Obvious ADR there where it's okay. You could have just said the sun's coming up and left it with that mm -hmm. look We'll figure it out guys. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just state everything and they <laughs> state everything Well, if they didn't state everything none of the characters in this movie would have anything to say <laughs> How was How was Turtles 2 a more dignified movie? Than this turtle too. <laughs> they have fucking vanilla ice dance off. Yeah. Ninja rap. Uh huh. Token Razar. 
why ah uh, they're stupid mm-hmm. all that shit Super Shredder killing yeah. himself under a pier. Yeah. Way more fun than uh-huh. this. Because, like, with all of the cheesiness of it, like, it feels like there's some heart to it and there's some moments to it. Yeah. They take some time out. And there's there's totally, like, moments that are like a living cartoon. Uh-huh. And they do that in all the Turtles yeah. live action. The, the first three Turtles movies mm-hmm. that they did. Even the third one mm. that most people don't like. Um, it's, it's not a good movie. But there's fun moments to it, and they absolutely still take moments to pause. Mm-hmm. Even if you're going to be a cartoon, you got to ground yourself somewhere. Mm-hmm. Unless it's an actual cartoon, you know. Even like, even then, you you know you got to have some moments. Even the minor characters, like Vanilla Ice and the other turtles too. When the turtles burst in, Vanilla Ice stops and he goes, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" <laughs> like a fucking leader. <laughs> I want. I wanted Vanilla Ice to show up in this one and have to do some like fight scenes or something. Yeah, it's like, come on, man, you were in fucking ridiculous six. You can't be in this movie. You know what they should have done? They should have had a big climax where people see the Technodrome and they're like, whoa, Mm. shit's going down. That's when the turtles are revealed to the city, and it's like, Mm -hmm. aha, they can be accepted as they are. And then the city has to team up to take out crane drones or you know do you mean like the climax of like Sharknado 2 yeah everyone's got a team up <laughs> yeah. to take them out Vanilla Ice shows up uh-huh. like Sharknado 2 you get a D-list celebrity yeah or two or three mm-hmm. and then he's got to fight off Krangs that'd yeah. be great right you got Ryan with his trident yeah like, get Sharknado Ryan in Turtles 2 I would give it a glowing review if Ryan yeah. was in there with the tridents mm-hmm Absolutely. But uh, they they didn't have anything fun like that. No, I I just want to nap so hard. <laughs> I want to nap and just not really watch anything for a while because this movie's <laughs> burned me out on visual medium. <laughs> just an assault of every sense. Uh huh. Yeah. I feel like I could smell the shit through the screen. This movie made me miss the subtleties of Batman v Superman. <laughs> I miss the subtleties of Batman and Robin. Yes. Speaking of Robin. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Good lord. Because at least that's funny, Batman. At least I can laugh at that shit. Um, Batman v Superman's awful, but like at least he got like, like a crazy Ben Affleck being creepy in the movie. He was great. His scenes were amazing. Um, there's nothing like that here. This is just some dork kid on the playground playing with toys, and I'm being forced to watch it because apparently that cost $100 million. It felt like... Two hours of watching a kid in a sandbox snorting and laughing. Yeah, and like, it. and like, yeah, and it, like, and like ah, that situation, <laughs> I want to pee on both of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go up to the screen. Just, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's your fucking 3D. <laughs> right in your mouth, fucking Michelangelo blow. <laughs> oh, sorry, this, that was the porn character. This movie, Michelangelo Bloat. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, there was Dongatello, Leah Hardo, Michelangelo Bloat, and Rafalis. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I feel like they lazed out on that one. I wish, I wish Krang was in it and they just called him Bang. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Crank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Baxter Cockman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do not, if I have any final thoughts for this thing, it is in no way do I recommend sitting through this. I don't give a shit if you're watching it on your fucking phone to kill time in an airport. <laughs> Just throw your phone in water. <laughs> It'll thank you for it. Give it a quick death. <laughs> Lordy, I hope this tanks. I know it won't, but I wish it would because it doesn't deserve mm-hmm. any kind of patronage or money. Uh-huh. <laughs> it gave me a little hope that, like, it seems like a lot of the screenings are. This parking lot is, like, empty. Like, so maybe that's just Springfield. I don't know if Phelan's Theater was apparently dead, too, but, like, I don't know. Springfield's weird at gauging that kind of thing. Like, because. Like, it was a packed house when, like, Brian and I saw the nice guys, and that made, like, $11 million on opening week. Like, I remember it being, like, packed 
to shit when like Sarah and I went to go see the host but that made like $5 million on its opening weekend. So apparently all of that came from Springfield. I bet you tomorrow it'll be busier because it's mm. a Friday. I mean, yeah, it's summer, but yeah. like, um, you know, they'll, they'll take kids to go see it, you know, on the weekend. Yeah, they'll take the kids to go see this stupid fucking thing. <laughs> take your kids to see this. Jesus Christ. Take, take, Why don't you take him to see Secret Life of Pets? It's going to be the best thing ever. Holy shit. <laughs> so fucking That movie needs to annoying. get here fast so I can stop seeing trailers for it. I can't wait for its inevitable tank under expectations. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll do good for a kid's movie, but, like, it's going to be so underwhelming compared to all of the advertising they're doing. Like you were saying, you know, like they're like, from the producers of Secret Life of Pets... Like, let's not get ahead of ourselves movie. That was the trailer for Sing, which looked awful. Um, <laughs> from the creators of Secret Life of Pets. Dude, slow it the fuck down. I mean, I do feel like I've already seen the movie. How many fucking I times have I've seen, seen the, the movie trailer? Because I've seen Toy Story. It's the <laughs> same fucking movie. Yeah, it is the it same is sort of beat. It is the same movie. <laughs> it is... The animals, when the humans aren't around, they can talk and they can do people things. And then the lady gets another newer pet and the other one's jealous because he's not head honcho anymore. So he devises a scheme to get rid of them. And then they're lost in the city and have to make their way back home because the writers are huge Toy Story fans. <laughs> Man, everything was annoying here. Everything. I'm so annoyed at most things right now. <laughs> it, oh, God. I'm annoyed at the popcorn bag in the back seat because I don't know if it's going to tip over when I'm driving home. <laughs> <laughs> I just You should have gotten a giant barrel to put popcorn in I, Yeah, but I can't afford $100 million to CGI that shit You can't put that much popcorn in a barrel That's too much <laughs> That is too much popcorn <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, next week I think week you is... could like you could type on a keyboard blindly and come up with a better script than this movie. Yeah, has. the story will make more sense. <laughs> um, the mm, next week is like Conjuring Two and oh god, I think fucking Warcraft is next week. Um, Piss, shit. Speaking of shit, I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> I don't even know if that'll be one of the worst things of the year or not. It just looks like something I am not interested in at all. <laughs> <laughs> two and a half hours. I checked. It's like only two hours. I'm like, okay, I can deal with that. Thank you, movie. <laughs> at least it's not that. Ugh, God. But yeah, I got I got nothing else about turtles. You. I think it's I think it's exhausted. Don't go see it. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck right off. Uh, later.